Hello and welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we'll be talking about how to estimate a population mean, meaning we're going to be dealing with T. So with that, we need to calculate with a sample standard deviation, which is going to bring in some uh, problems with uh, degrees of freedom, which is also true for the Z-score. If we don't have the overall population, we shouldn't be using a Z-score. We'll be using the student's T distribution instead. Um, so with that in mind, we're doing different programs than what we have been. We're not going to be doing norm CDF. We're not going to be doing inverse norm. We're not going to be doing one prop uh, Z test. What we're going to be doing is T intervals. And we're going to be T interval because it typically is talking about a mean and standard deviation. And we're usually working with these as proportions. However, with T intervals, we're usually talking about population means. And that is perfectly fine for this circumstance where we have a sample mean calculated, a sample standard deviation. You even see it says SX was so talking about the sample standard deviation, a value for N or the number of values in your overall sample and the confidence level that you have in mind. This is if you're dealing with the statistics of the data. If instead you have the data itself and you have put that into lists, then you, when you're in T interval, you put in your list, a frequency list, if that exists, as well as the confidence interval. Then it will calculate the mean standard deviation for you and do the T interval at the same time and give all three outputs. This way, you don't need to put the data into a list and then calculate using uh, one var stats to find the standard deviation and the mean. So that's pretty fantastic, I think. And this is, again, if you're trying to find the interval itself. So from what point to what point should we be uh, estimating a confidence level for our mean? If instead we have, um, we need to figure out um, the scores, if we want to find out the actual T values, because this kind of skips through that. It makes it so you don't have to see what the T values are themselves. But if you do want to find the T values, then you can do that. That's going to be using inverse T. Now, inverse norm was down here in VARES. We have inverse norm. That's if we had a percentage to the uh, left side of something and we wanted to find the Z score appropriate. We also have inverse T, which works in the same way. And here we have the inverse T, which is looking for the same overall values, the area and the degrees of freedom. So the area being, okay, what area to the left side of something are you working with? And then what are your degrees of freedom? The degrees of freedom being N minus one. So the number of values in your sample minus one. And that's all you need to find inverse T. This shrinks down all the work that you'd have to do if you're using the T distribution table where you'd have to find the percentage of one of the tails and then the degrees of freedom that you're looking for and then you find both your T values for that. This saves a lot of that work so you don't have to fuss around with that table itself. Okay, now with that in mind, uh, those are the two functions that we're going to be using with T distributions. To demonstrate that, I'm going to have a couple problems attached here at the bottom of the video. Okay, so let's go to the main screen. All right, so the problem that I'm going to be working with is a problem from the textbook that I'm using in my course. If you're in my class, the problem that I'm going to be doing is number 20 on page 415. And I have it on the bottom of the screen here. A simple random sample of size n is drawn. The sample mean x bar is found to be 35.1 and the sample standard deviation s is found to be 8.7. So s or sometimes uh, standard error depending on who you talk to. Now first part a, construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean if the sample size n is 40. All right, so in that case, again, we're constructing a uh, confidence interval, but here we're dealing with a sample size and we're finding it for the mean. That tells us we're dealing with T intervals. If we were calculating for proportions, then we'd be doing stuff with one prob Z test, or Z int, rather. All right, so to access that, again, we're in stat, and I go down to T interval, which is number eight. So I'm just going to hit eight. 
Now, in this case, the data that I was given, according to my example, the mean was 35.1. S of X, or the sample standard deviation, is found to be 8.7. And I have 40 values in my data set, according to part A. The confidence level I'm looking for is just 0.9. So I can delete the 5 or just write in 0.9 itself. Then hit calculate. It'll paste to the main screen in a moment. And there we go. It calculates the interval. Sometimes it takes a little bit. The reason is because it is calculating quite a few things in the background before giving this interval. And it's giving it into a nice uh, setup here. So we have 32.78 up to 37.42. So here analysis wise, I would say that I am 90% confident that the mean of, uh, let's see here, it doesn't really give us much of a description. So I'd say mean of the uh, population is between the values of 32.78 and 37.42. It's always about how confident we are. Now the next one is going to highlight something important about T intervals. I'm only gonna do two parts for this. Uh, construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean if instead the sample size n is 100 and how does increasing the sample size affect the margin of error e okay now this is a rudimentary part of t intervals or a basic part of t intervals that we need to understand if we increase the sample size and that's just going to lend us some more confidence and the reason is because the standard deviation um, when you're dealing with situations like this, is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So if we increase n, then the standard deviation is overall going to get smaller, therefore our interval should weaker, would, should weaken, or more, uh, uh, more clearly, our interval is going to become shorter or thinner. So I expect it not to be as wide as 32 up to 37, maybe 33 up to 36 or 35. All right. So let's do uh, vers again, or stat rather. Let's do stat, go over to t interval, and let's change the n value up to 100. Still doing a confidence level of 0.9. When I calculate that, I get 33.655 up to 36.54. This is not as wide as the previous interval, and that is what we expected. If we increase the sample size, so that means we're also basically increasing the confidence, and therefore, the question of what happens to the margin of error, well, the margin of error has decreased because the margin from 35.1 up to 36.5 has, has decreased from what it had been of 35.1 up to, I believe it was 37.4 or so. Yeah, 37.42. So that's a way to analyze that. And the same thing happens if you uh, decrease the size of the confidence, um, then you'd get a shorter interval. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things you can test around with, with T interval. So pretty easy to execute, pretty easy to use, and you probably shouldn't run into too many issues. Just make sure you recognize whether you're using a T interval or if you're doing a proportion. Because those are two different calculations. Generally, if you are running proportions and you try to run T interval or Z interval, you should see values that you would not expect to see. Now I'm going to do one other problem here. Here I have a small data set. I have it at the bottom of the screen here. It's for crawling babies. The following data represents the age in weeks at which babies first crawl based on a survey of 12 mothers conducted by Essential Baby. And I have 12 values here. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go into stat, edit, and I'm going to populate a list. I'm going to clear these values out of the list. I'm going to populate list one with the values in my data set here. So I have 50, 30, 44, 35, 39, 26, 47, 37, 56, 26, 39, and 28. There we go. All right. I type them in, use my keyboard, so it takes a little bit for my calculator to catch up. Now with all these values in my list, I'm going to want to find the t-interval. 
The question is going to be construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the mean age at which a baby first crawls. Okay. Now to do that, what I'm going to want to work with is T interval still. But in this case, I have the data. Now I could have run one ver stats on that data and found the mean and standard deviation and then plug them into T interval. However, I don't need to do that. I have the list. In this case, I don't have a frequency list. So I'm going to keep it as one indicating each value is its own individual point and it only represents one point in the data set. And I'm running a confidence level of 0.95. I calculate with that, it typically takes a little bit because it's working with a full set of data, but yet again, I get the overall confidence level as well as the mean and calculated sample standard deviation, which is pretty great. That way, if I needed to find the mean and standard deviation and the confidence level, then I can do that all in one fell swoop, kind of like one Bear's stats does all in one fell swoop, finding the five number summary and other important statistics. So the T interval overall is pretty nice to use. Just make sure you're in the right form and make sure you are trying to calculate the mean of something. Um, that's a very particular circumstance. Uh, with that said, uh, that's everything that I wanted to discuss for today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Or if you're one of my students, feel free to just come up and ask me. I will see you in another video.